G'day folks, welcome back to the channel for another learning videography episode with the big fella. And if this is the first time you're clicking on the big fella, make sure you subscribe and have those notifications turned on. And today we're going to get into a seemingly more complex bit of kit, but it is made to make your life with a, a camera a lot easier. It's called a gimbal. Now I've got a Zhiyun Webill S and I find it, it's actually not a bad gimbal. It's, it's actually pretty good, but it can be a little bit tricky to set up and get balanced. And that's what we're gonna go through in a little bit more detail today. So I'll be listing the functions on this device that I currently use. For further info on the other functions and accessories, visit Zhiyun Tech, that is Z-H-I-Y-U-N hyphen T-E-C-H dot com. The Webill S from Zhiyun Tech is what they affectionately call the Tiny Giant. Their website says that it's easily able to handle mainstream mirrorless and DSLR camera combos. With an upgraded algorithm and ultra low latency HD image transmission module, which is a wireless accessory that's sold separately, stronger motors among a host of other features that this gimbal offers, it certainly sounds like it packs a decent punch. Now, one of Zhiyun Tech's plug line sell points is that it is as compact as a piece of A4 paper. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Being that it's only 297 millimeters or just under one foot total length. Uh, but anyone that's used a gimbal before knows that once they're at rest and the motors are off, they can be rather unruly if their independent axes aren't locked into place. So it's merely a, a height size comparison and definitely not taking into account the length and width of the gimbal. And there's three locks that can be used to immobilize movement in any of the operating axes, be it pan, tilt, or roll. Along each of these axes, there's independent sliding arms with measure marks that are cut out and are very clearly defined. The idea behind this is that no matter what the equipment you have mounted or the accessories attached to it, it should be able to be balanced perfectly. With the arm of each axis, there's also a locking lever to secure everything in place. This has a very handy quick release plate with a quarter inch threaded mount, grippy rubber pads to arrest movement, two raised locating hooks at the rear of the mount, which help the plate be securely located in place at the back and the front, where there's a spring loaded rod, which pushes in and retracts the locking mechanism. Once the quick release plate is in place, it can be secured by the spring-loaded and machine-knurled thumb screw. What I'm going to do now is uh, just demonstrate how the quick release works on the, uh, the, the gimbal. So you can actually take the, the camera away and not have to alter the position or the weight or the balance of the gimbal. So it just kind of snaps back on. So what we're going to do now, just kind of do this. I'm just going to be a little bit tricky, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so underneath here, there is a little thumb screw, knurled thumb screw. Okay, similar to this, but it's a lot smaller. And what this does, you can just hold on to it, undo this. Okay, now there's a little spring loaded mechanism in here. So you push this in here and it releases the camera from the gimbal. So I'm gonna take this, the communications port out and the camera and the gimbal are now separate. The quick release plate, again, has all these measure marks on here so you can get the camera balanced, but because this lens is fairly long, uh, it's a 16 mil, it's a prime lens, but this is all kind of mounted toward the rear. Okay, so that's why it's all, all mounted back up here. Because of the, the size of the lens, the diameter here, there's not an actual focus ring in place. This is just, uh, I'm not sure ex exactly why this is here, to be honest. This is just kind of rolling around. It doesn't actually do anything. But there is a second plate in between the base of the camera and the quick release plate. And this is to kind of act as a standoff between the camera, uh, the camera lens 
is to hold the the camera apart from the quick release plate without interfering with the, the body of the lens. And what I've found is the best way to disconnect these, it's a little bit big for a standard flathead screwdriver. So what I do is use another form of currency in the form of an American nickel. So use a nickel, it's basically exactly the same uh, width and it doesn't actually interfere with any of the, uh, the, the turn circle that you need. So you can undo it like that and do it back up. It's better than any flathead screwdriver I've ever found. There's another uh, screw holding the, the, the mount in place, the standoff in place between the, the quick release mount and the base of the camera. Now we're going to put it back on the gimbal. Before we remount the camera back onto the gimbal, I wanted to show you how this quick release actually works. Now, what we've got here are uh, two raised little edges or barbs that uh, connect up to two little hollow points at the uh, underside of the quick release plate. And this kind of locates everything back up. So this section here can be depressed and you can see this section in here moving in and out, okay? So this is spring-loaded, and once it's all mounted up, this pushes in, that's, that's got a separate spring, a lot softer spring, but you can push it in and do it up like so. So we're gonna put this back together. Okay, now at the back of the camera, you can see the, the join between the mount and the quick release plate. That's all nice and flush. Okay, so if it's not flush, then the front of the quick release plate won't go back in place as easily. So this is what you gotta do. You gotta push that inside there, let it click into place, and then you can push this in and rotate until it's tight, and it's all back to how it was before, ready to shoot. And the WeBuild S actually uses 18650 batteries, uh, which for those unfamiliar with them look like oversized AA batteries. The WeBuild S comes with two of these batteries and a charger cable as standard. There's also a myriad of comms cables for use with various cameras, which cover virtually all USB standards. In the accessories provided with the WeBuild S, you'll find a handle with a quarter inch thread at the top which doubles as a very sturdy tripod. It has long legs for good balanced footprint and when not being used as a tripod, it can be folded up and used as either a base handle or more importantly, it can also be used in the quarter inch hole provided just above the battery compartment. Another plus to using this location for the handle is that it has six holes at hexagonal points for the locking pin provided on the base of the quarter inch threaded mount to slot into. Screw the thread down to the base of the gimbal until it feels tight. Then flick the lever up to extract the locking pin. When the pin finds a locking hole, then the handle can be locked in place. Once they're locked, the handle will not move until the lever is set in the unlock position. The only place that you can actually lock that grip into place is up here on the gimbal. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, holes in a hexagon. Down here, it's just a flat surface with the, the quarter inch adapter. And on the rosette, there's nothing like that. So the only place you can do it is up here. So now that's, that's fairly tight. Now if I push this lever up, it's activated but it hasn't actually found one of the holes yet and now it has you can hear that click so now it's locked and it's not moving anywhere and she's right to go shooting now for the pros the it has a very stable video production and it beats most vlogging setups for overall stability it has a professional quality feel to the product the materials feel solid and you can imagine using this for about as long as you'd use the camera Unfortunately, with a uh, product like this, it's all pretty complicated and can be hard to set up, so there are some cons. Uh, it is rather heavily biased towards right-handers, as you probably have imagined right now. I'm a lefty, so 
yeah, I have a little bit of an issue with this personally, but that's just the way it goes. You kind of have to, you know, deal with it. The positioning of the buttons and controls on the handle, uh, the rosette position for a placement of a magic arm for an external monitor, all lend itself to right-handed use. As a result, the practicality of the gimbal is somewhat limited when it comes to attaching external features, and I personally will have to use another method when I get to using an external monitor. The initial setup can be somewhat fiddly if you're a first-timer using gimbals. Balancing may seem right once it's all been set up and freely rotating with no undue weight bias on any axis, but then you remove the camera via the quick release plate and without touching any settings, and when you put it back on, it'll be out of balance and want to rotate on one or more axes. And one of the cons that really bugs me is the the facts are somewhat out of proportion with uh, typical Chinese advertising. Ziyun have taken one dimension of the gimbal and tried to make it sound like a compact unit, where no gimbal is as thin as a piece of paper, regardless of what measurements are similar. Also, the case that it comes in is not a carry case, so it'll have to find some secure place in a bag. Just make sure to lock the axes in place when traveling. So overall, it's a good bit of kit and can be just a little bit fiddly but I think the the trade-off with fairly decent video production good stability I think it's kind of worth it you got pros and cons so yeah you, you kind of just have to make do sometimes the cost of this Xeon Tech gimbal off eBay was somewhere around 450 Australian dollars and I think you could probably find it a little bit cheaper uh, elsewhere maybe for another country like the US or maybe even Great Britain. But the value for money and what you get is actually pretty well worth it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised once you actually pick one of these up. Now here it is. I have the handle slash tripod uh, mounted up here and I have another small tripod kind of mounted at the bottom. This is off a, another gimbal for a GoPro. So I've actually locked all these in place so I can manage to uh, show you a little bit about the, the locking mechanism on on the quick release plate. So here's the barbs, okay, and here is the the receiving end of those barbs. So there you got those two little uh, little divots down there, and you've got your threaded section there, and I'll put this on like so and you push the pin in it locks itself into place and you screw it on that's set to go I have a, a, a communications cable with micro USB adapter which plugs directly into my Canon M50 camera and what it does it makes the uh, gimbals synchronization with the camera so what I can do is uh, press record via one button which is a little red button here and that basically starts and stops any movie but I use mine mostly for movie shooting and that red button there gets quite a bit of use there is a setup menu which can be accessed on the handle of the gimbal it's not really all that intuitive to use you kind of have to use this little knurled thing here this is kind of like a joystick basically you have to use it up and down press the center button uh, to make selections and yeah it is a little bit complicated for first timers but if you get enough experience and practice with it there's no reason why you can't master it just like anything else and what that menu system can do is manipulate virtually all the settings that are needed for the gimbal which includes motor strength axis adjustments firmware updates uh, the whole lot so it's very customizable and the battery compartment as you can see here is just under the handle these 18650 batteries as you can see are quite large and are fairly fit for purpose with a pretty good life um, what I can do with these is probably about maybe between 12 and 14 hours on a single charge and uh, that is using the, the motors up and down I haven't really been able to master the left and right. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm missing there. I, I 
might have to look a little bit further into it. It seems as though I had up, down, left and right ability before and I don't really have it now so I might have done something with the settings, I'm not sure, I'm going to have to look into that. So you can see here what I was saying before about the gimbal being broadly biased towards right-handers. I've got my left hand over the follow button over here which basically makes the, the gimbal follow your motions instead of just staying still and uh, holding all, all the axes in place. Basically here I've got my left finger going around the the knurled button for a focus ring okay so <laughs> I, I can't get my finger around that properly if I was right-handed not a problem left-handed sorry so like I was saying before with the fiddly bit of the uh, setting up of the gimbal basically you can put my uh, prime 16 millimeter um, wide angle lens onto the camera and balance it to suit but then you take that lens off and put the the kit lens 15 to 45 mil lens on there and it'll be all over the place but it doesn't have to be something as major as that what it can also be is the fact that you if you haven't actually hooked up the the cable to the camera it can just be something as simple as that I mean that is a, a very lightweight uh, connection but it can also throw out the whole balance of, of the gimbal so like I said it can, can be a little bit fiddly but it takes a little bit of getting used to and you've got to remember that every change that you make it, it will have an adverse effect on the on the balance of the the axes of the gimbal now when I first got this gimbal what I did was take it for a bit of a test run as you do you kind of get uh, excited and you think okay well what exactly can it do so once you got it all set up and ready to shoot, one thing I did notice straight away was the, um, the fact that it, it kind of has a bit of a, a bank or a tilt, uh, regardless of how well it's been set up and how well it's balanced. Uh, if you kind of move it about in a, well, not exactly a sudden fashion, but what it, what it does, it kind of rotates a little bit like a bank or a tilt, and it kind of goes over a little bit, depending on which way you actually point the camera so if you're moving the camera around to the left it'll want to bank to the left and the same with the right hand side now I'm not sure if this is a, a thing with the gimbal itself if it's just part of what it does it can be a little bit annoying because you think that's going to be uh, totally straight and you think it's going to be um, you know all good and then what happens it, it starts to bank a little bit on you not very much just a couple of degrees but it's something that you can actually look at and think, okay, well, why did it do that? It shouldn't have done it. But it's just one of those features with the gimbal, uh, if it is a feature, and it's kind of something that you have to factor in. So the bottom line on the Zhiyun Tech uh, Webuild S gimbal, it's uh, pretty well worth the money as far as I'm concerned. Now with any gimbal, it's going to be stability that is the key. And it kind of does this in spades. I mean, besides the momentary roll that you can get in some instances, it's a lot better than, say, shooting with a mini tripod uh, for a vlog. The only part where a mini tripod would actually outdo the gimbal is if you're turning it to face yourself instead of facing out towards a, a subject. So, yeah, it, it doesn't really work as, as far as... Um, a talking head type of uh, situation goes. If you're shooting a still subject you'll see how the gimbal comes into its own. Uh, it, it beats a standard vlogging technique with a little uh, mini tripod hands down. Now for mine it is very strong value for the money because it can be used in well virtually all circumstances that you would use except for vlogging. It does take a bit of adaptation a bit of experimentation to get the proper feel for the gimbal but once you've got everything sorted for your camera, once you're used to switching over lenses and external microphones, whatever the case may be, and you can rebalance the gimbal on the fly, then yeah, it comes into its own. Now starting up the gimbal, you have to hold the power button just over here for two seconds. It comes on and it flexes into life so now 
it'll kind of follow you wherever you want to put it. But if you got, want it to really follow you, you have to push this little trigger down here, which turns it from PF here into F for follow mode. And what that does, say you're uh, doing a bit of a run and gun sequence and you're kind of aiming the camera different ways, all right, and you want to aim down just for a second, okay? If you aim down, it stays like that. If you wanted to get it to follow your movements, you hold the trigger and it locks that axis or vaguely makes it follow it. Not really locks it as such, but it's kind of there to, uh, to, to point where the, the, the person's actually shooting wants it to go. Release it and it kind of stays there. All right, so what you do is you, you kind of go back to where you were, push it back in, and then it comes back up here. Very simple. Okay guys, so that's about it for now. Thank you very much for watching as usual. Like, comment, share and subscribe. That really helps me out. And uh, I'll look forward to your company on the next video. And in the meantime, have fun with your Zhiyun Tech Weebill S gimbal, if you choose to get one. All right, this has been the big fella. Have a good one, guys.